Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Secrets to Seed Beads, episode 10. Yahoo! Oh my gosh. We've had so much fun with all these Secrets to Seed Beads, all 10 episodes. I hope you've seen them all. Uh, if you have been watching all of them and practicing all those techniques you've been learning, man, you're a good beater now, I'm thinking. <laughs> and on episode 10, we're going to take a lot of those techniques, merge them into one fabulous project, and uh, excite you again, I hope. Now, last episode, we made this beautiful, elegant necklace, which is one of my favorites. I mean, I think if I'm going to recreate any of these 10 for myself, it might be this one. Uh, I hope you enjoyed making this in the last episode to Secrets to Seed Beads. And now we're going to episode 10. And this is what we're creating this time. <gasps> ah, so fabulous. Look at the colors. Oh my gosh. It all started with this cabochon. This is a dichroic glass cabochon. It comes in a set of three. And that's what I began with. And I wanted to mirror those colors in all my embellishments. Uh, this one will incorporate this twisted rope necklace, which is very flexible and nice and wonderful to wear. And then we're going to do seed bead embroidery along with a little bit of that peyote stitch we learned last time. And in fact, this is embroidery now, so the back of this is leather. So the things we're going to be needing, we're going to need lots of seed beads, different colors, different shapes. I'm also going to be using some three millimeter bicones, preciosa, the leather, the cabochon, needle and thread, and of course, cones and a clasp and a couple of jump rings and a head pin. So let's get started on this. We're going to start with the twisted rope necklace. So I've got my needle and thread. I didn't have a bead buddy handy, so I'm going to use a stop bead just by putting one bead on my needle. The bead buddy is that little uh, spring clippy thing that holds the end of your thread so your beads don't go sliding off the end. But when you're lacking a bead buddy, don't be afraid to use a stop bead. I just put a bead on there. Any bead will do because you're not going to incorporate this in your final design. This is just for now. And then I go back through it again the same direction. Basically, I'm tying a knot through the bead so that that becomes my stop bead. In fact, I can even slide it a little bit, but things won't easily slide off the tail of my thread now. So that's my stop bead. Next step is to add four of these little green beads. One, two, three, four. I'm going to add a blue, a gold, a bicone, a gold, and a blue. Pull those all down to my stop bead. Now I'm going to go back through just the green ones. One, two, come on, three, four. Up through all four of the green ones. And pull that through to make sort of a circle. And I can pull that down to my stop bead. And now we're going to start repeating this pattern, basically. Except I'm, instead of four green beads this time, I'm going to add one. One green, one blue, one gold, one orange, and then back again, gold and blue. Pull these all the way down. And I'm going to go through the top four green beads. Not this bottom one. That one is going to stay down there. I'm going to go through all four of these green beads. So now you can see we've made two loops. Well, this one's a little higher than the other one. I'm going to just push it over so that they're friends over there. And do it again. One green, one blue, one gold, one orange, one gold, one blue. Bring all of these down. Come on. Go through the top four green beads. So not these two, but these four. Make sure I'm centered where you can see me. One, two, three, four. All four of those. Pull that through. 
and that other that loop I just made push it over to join the others you can see already where we're starting to spiral around pick up green blue gold orange gold and blue bring those down and do it again and we're just going to keep repeating that action it's a simple stitch it is not a fast stitch really on the length of this we're only adding one green seed bead at a time for the length so this time we're going to go through the top four green beads one two three four those right there and we keep going around like that and add beads add beads so that we end up with this neck piece that we're working toward in fact because you're probably tired of watching me do this already let's do one more one green one blue one gold one bicone a gold and a blue bring them all down and go through the top four green beads just the top four and the others stay down there so one two three four green seed beads pull all that through to make another loop make sure that loop is going the same direction as all the other loops and you can see we're getting quite a good spiral going here and if we keep going we'll end up with a piece that looks more like this here's my needle where did I finish oh that's my tail that's my start right there and of course for this necklace we're going to be needing to make two seven inch lengths of that now the question is how do you finish it and just like I've shown in previous secrets to seed beads I take my thread here which I had carefully very carefully threaded earlier before we started the video and which came undone and rethread that needle there we go so I've already got a tapered end on this so this is so easy to slip into a cone but like I've done before I'm going to start off by making a wire loop to attach it all to I'm using just a plain old ordinary 21 gauge head pin all I really need is a piece of wire so we're going to turn that into not a head pin anymore by cutting its little head off off with its head ah <laughs> we'll turn this little end into a wrap loop this is going to be inside the cone so I don't care if it's pretty or not make a 90 degree bend grab my round nose pliers loop that around reposition loop it the rest of the way around and then with my chain nose pliers wrap the loop wrap wrap and that's enough I don't need it I just need it to be secure I don't need it to be gorgeous so then I trim off that little bit of a tail there bye bye putting my finger over the end of it so it doesn't go flying into somebody's face there we go and then I can sew the end of this neck piece onto the loop and that is what I'll do just sew it right on there just like sewing on a button hopefully you've all sewn on buttons I know people who don't know how um, and I went through the, the loop I'm going through a bead go through the loop go through a bead as many times as you need to to make you feel secure that this is tight maybe go through a n different bead whatever it takes to make you feel comfortable that this is not going to come in I've got too many threads going on here hang on <laughs> mm. 
I don't want to tie a knot there. Come on. I'm making knots. That's what I'm doing. I don't want a knot yet. Before your knots become permanent, fix them. <laughs> Yeah, okay, it's permanent now. That's all right, because all this is going to be under the cone, and I just don't really care. And I go through a bead, and I go through the loop. Pull it through. Any way that gets it secure on there, that's all that's important. Through the bead, through the loop, pull it through. Through a different bead. Just because I want to through the loop, any old ugly thing that happens, it doesn't matter. Through the loop. And then ultimately, I want to tie a couple of half hitches, which I actually already have unintentionally. A couple of half hitches by going through and then going through the loop on purpose this time to make a knot. And half hitches, by the, their very nature, half hitches, basically they're half a knot. So to make it a true knot, you have to at least do them twice. And then I'm going to use my little thread burner. I like to use the thread burner because when this little bit of nylon thread melts, it makes a little ball and makes it harder for that knot to come undone. So this is a super nifty little tool. You just push the little button and it gets hot. And it gets hot, and you melt off the thread. Ooh, cool. I love that thing. And because I am a little bit careful about such things, I'm also going to put it on a blob of glue. Just for extra security. Because I am the kind of person who will wear suspenders with a belt. Come on. This is what extra head pins are good for. Come on, just a little bit of glue. That's all I need. When in doubt, take the top off and get yourself a little bit of glue. Ta-da. Don't get it on my mat, though. I don't want to glue my mat. And I don't even need the light weight for it to dry. I can just put my cone right on there. Put the cone on. And notice how all the yuckiness I made, that ugly knot, the blob of glue, it all disappears in the cone. So who cares? And now I'm going to make another wrap loop on this side. I'm going to try and make it look really nice. However long I make this stem, this stem right here, that's how many loops I'm going to have. So I want enough, but not too much. So I'm going to bend it right there, making a 90 degree bend. Using my brown nose pliers, I'll make the loop a nice loop, big enough to hold my clasp, reposition my pliers, finish the loop, change hands. Now with my chain nose pliers, I will create the loops. And every wrap around goes right below the wrap below it, so we make sort of a spiral, a coil, if you will, a spring. Some people even like to come all the way down, down the cone and make a nice pattern on the cone, and that's okay too. You do what you'd like. Trim off that tail. Don't let it fly in anybody's eyes, including your own. Do any fine tuning you think it might need. And now we're ready to add the clasp on this end. And that is with, I'm using this little magnetic clasp. I like this one, it's a cool one. And a jump ring. And I've said it before, I'll say it again. Jump rings are twisted open. I've got a new phrase to go with that though. Twisted open like an Oreo, not like a hot dog. <laughs> so twist it open, <laughs> add your clasp, and twist it closed. 
This is a cool little clasp. It's magnetic. It's so strong, I kind of have to hold it with the pliers to pull it apart. See how it works? Little magnetic clasp. Very nice with people who have trouble clasping things that are a little arthritic, perhaps. Cool thing. And then we, of course, make another 7-inch section. Add the cone and the, the, the other end of the clasp to the other end, and we've got the neck part made. You may be entirely happy with just this as your beautiful necklace, but we're going to move on to the focal. Okay, to get ready to make this fabulous focal, we're going to start with a little bit of this white lacy stiff stuff. Now, it comes in white. I think it might come in other colors. I know Fire Mountain has it in white. Um, but I don't want it to be seen from the other side, so I took a bit of black acrylic paint and I just painted that baby black. You could use some Sharpie marker too. I've done that as well. And then I took one of my cabochons. These come in a three-piece set. This is the, one of the two smaller ones. And I just glued it right on there. It's just to tack it down temporarily. The beads are what's going to hold it in place. So you can use uh, any kind of glue you want. I think I used some E6000 on this one. Just to tack it in place. Don't get close to the edge. We need to be able to stitch through all this. We don't want a lot of glue there. So just tack that right in the middle of this. Now, get out that handy dandy needle and thread. And I'm going to want to go up from the underside of this stiff stuff fabric and I want it to stay in place. This is sort of a, not a really woven type fabric. And so occasionally you'll find that your knot will come right through. So I want to remind people how to make a quilter's knot. Quilter knot quilter's knot is a nice big round knot that doesn't come through your fabric easily. So here I have a, a piece of thread on a needle and I'm going to imagine this thread and this needle forming a circle. So here's the tail end of the thread. Here's the point of my needle, and I'm going to grip the needle and the tail end of my thread in my, my same hand, in my right hand. I'm going to wrap it around a few times. I can wrap it around three or four times, or five, or six, or seven. The more times you wrap it around, the bigger your knot will be. Now I'm going to grip all those wraps. I'm going to pull the needle through, and here is my big knot. Nice, huh? Now that is a knot that is not coming through that fabric. It's great for uh, sewing, on, um, sewing on buttons too, because I don't know about you, but I have definitely pulled my knot through when I've been trying to do that. So I'm going to go through this stiff stuff right next to the cabochon. It's going to be hard to see because I did make it a black background. Let's see if I can, there's my needle. I'm going right by the edge of the cabochon. Pull it through, ta-ta-da, and that big old knot stays on the back. And don't worry about the back. We're going to cover that all up with leather. So another chance where you get to be sloppy and messy. We don't care what the, black, what the back looks like. We're just going to cover it up with leather anyway. So don't worry about it. So I've got that nicely threaded in there. And I'm going to pick up four of my blue beads. One, two, three, four. Bring it all the way down to the base of my thread. And imagine these beads going in a circle around this cabochon. So I want it right up at the base of my thread. And I'm going to poke my needle down through the end of that little train of, of beads. So I've gone through the back. And now I want my needle to come up between beads two and three, right there where I'm pointing try. <laughs> yeah, I did pretty good. Right up through there. Keep it nice and taut. And I'm going to go through beads three and four. Da -da -da -da. And this section of beads is now firmly attached to my stiff stuff right next to my cabochon. Pick up four more beads. One, two, three, four. Bring them down by the others. Go down right at the end of the train. Oops, and I unthreaded my needle. <laughs> it's, like, it's like a ceremonial thing for me now to unthread the needle a few times during the video. I think it's all play on my part to show my expertise at threading needles. <laughs> Uh, 
Okay, we can say whatever we want. <laughs> but I am pretty good at threading needles. <laughs> okay, I've come down through there. And again, I'm going to come up between beads three and four. Make sure you got your good glasses on. You got your good glasses on and you got your good lighting going. Because this bead embroidery is nothing to sneeze at. Um, we have a beautiful video at firemountaingems.com done by Jody Young. She is an awesome seed bead embroidery. And she uses another technique called a couching technique. I'm going to demonstrate that a little bit later. But she will do it for the whole piece. Um, this is just another way of doing it. And you can choose which way you like it best. And be, I, I would highly encourage you to go to firemountaingems.com and check out Jody Young's video series of seed bead embroidery. She's a master. She is very, very good. We have lots and lots of videos at firemountaingems.com, tutorials and ideas of how to make things. Um, check them out as well as the secrets to seed beads, the secrets to wire working, the secrets to, um, secrets to beading success. Lots of uh, great videos. Subscribe, like, share, do all those things. And I'm just keeping doing what I was doing before, which is to add four beads, go up between beads three and four, then go through beads three and four, add four more beads. And I'm going to go all the way around this cabochon, and that's going to be the basis for some peyote. You see this beautiful circle we're making around there? And one of the reasons I chose four beads, you could do three or five or whatever you want. But if you remember from previous secrets to seed beads, peyote is a lot easier if you have an even number. If I am adding four every time, I know I'm going to end up with an even number at the end. Even if I have to do a two at the end. <laughs> Just make it a little easier on yourself. Get this to be an even number of beads. So I'm going to keep adding four at a time, going round and round and round. And we'll end up with this. So I've gone all the way around. I've got an even number of seed beads all the way around this. And now I can start doing a peyote stitch to come up over my cabochon to hold it in place. Because remember, right now, it's just tacked on there with a little bit of E6000. So just like any other peyote bead stitch, <laughs> have we heard this before? Pick up a bead, skip a bead, Go through the next bead. <laughs> oh, you know, I forgot a step. One thing I do want to say, you see how loose this is and kind of, kind of a little bit crazy. One of the things I like to do sometimes is actually pass through all these beads one more time just to tighten it up and make it look a little more unit, one unit. I can go through these and make a circle around here. And this is not necessary. This is one of my steps. I guess you would call it one of the secrets to seed beads. Is this just makes it look a little more finished. I think in the end, I don't think it's going to make any difference at all. But it makes me feel better. Okay, just sort of smooths out that little circle and makes it neat. Neat and tidy. There we go. There. See, I think it looks a little bit smoother. Okay, now, pick up a bead, skip a bead, that's the one I'm skipping right there, and go through a bead. Ta-da! And that is that little T-shape, remember we talked about at the beginning of, of Peyote? with two beads that are side by side and then the next bead. And then we keep on doing that. Pick up a bead, skip the next bead, and go through a bead. So, so this would be referred to as tubular peyote. And it's going up and around my cabochon. Pick up a bead, skip a bead, Go through a bead. 
I'm telling you, the secrets to seed beads, I feel like I've hit the peyote stitch very hard. But honestly, it is such a versatile stitch. So I want you all to be really good at it. Check out all the secrets to seed beads to find that. And you can see as we're going around, does that look like the recognizable peyote that you're used to seeing now? with the pick up a bead, skip a bead, and go, go through a bead. And we're going to continue that all the way around. We're going to continue that all the way around more than once. I will take you to the next step. Here we can even have a little progression here. Oh no, that was the first one. There we go. Little progression. So on this one, I've gone quite a ways. I've actually got four rows of peyote here of the blue. Then I've added one of green, and then I've added one of this orange color, this burnt orange. I think it's called something raspberry. And I've gone all, and it's also a size 15, so it's gotten smaller. So because it's gotten smaller, it's coming in. It's, it's coming in on the top of the cabochon to hold it all in place. And what I'd like, like to do now is to add, to make this a little fancier, this is one row of that orange. Now I'm going to add a half a row of the orange. I'm going to skip every other bead. So I'm going to add one orange, just like usual. Add a bead, skip a bead, and go through a bead. But now just to give it more of a, a scalloped edge, I'm actually going to skip another bead. I'm not going to add anything. I just skipped another bead. Going through the next orange bead. And you notice that that black thread, you can barely see it at all. So don't worry that that thread is showing. And now I'll add a bead, skip a bead, go through a bead. This is what I refer to as a half row. There we go. And then skip a bead. No adding, just skip. Add a bead, skip a bead, go through a bead, skip a bead. Just a complete skip. Add a bead. I hope you can see this. These are size 15. See, this is the smallest ones we sell at Fire Mountain right now. I understand they go down to like a size 24. I have not worked with them. And then skip a bead. Add a bead. Skip a bead, go through a bead. And then skip a bead. I think I want to take this all the way around so you can see what I'm talking about, about the half row. Add a bead, skip a bead, go through a bead. Skip a bead. Add a bead, skip a bead, go through a bead. Skip a bead. Oh, you can see we didn't come out even here. And that's all right. Nobody's going to notice. This is the skip a bead where we didn't even add one. And we can decide. Do we want to add a bead here? Will it look best? Or do we want to just skip it all? I think it looks best if I... Mm, I think it looks best if I skip it all. Okay, so I'm going to skip a second bead because it didn't come out even. But in the long run, nobody's going to care. And that's what it looks like with just a half row. So we get this little triangle pattern on the edge instead of just around. So we've got a little bit of texture to it. I like that. And then Next step is start working on this outside border here, this outside edge. And to do that, the first thing I'm going to do is to skittle down. Remember that skittling that's weaving through the beads in an appropriate manner so that all the bead ends, all the cords end up in the gutters to get down, back down to the bottom. That's where we're going to work now is at the bottom. Skittle down. and skittle down until I get all the way to the bottom row. 
There we go. And now I can start the next portion of my beading, which I'm going to switch this up. We've, we've been using these little small cabochons. We're going to go to a big cabochon now because they come in sets of three, and so I have to use the big one sometimes too. So here's a big one that I've already done a lot. I've already done all this, this stitching that holds the cabochon in place. On the big one, there are a couple extra rows. You can see there's a couple extra rows of the orange here. And then I've skittled down and I've started adding this cup chain. This is the way it looks when you get it. And what I did was I used the couching method to sew all this cup chain down. And I will demonstrate that for you. As soon as I find the other end of my thread. I have so many pieces of thread flying around here. Hello, come here. I know the other end has a needle attached to it. And that's what I want. <laughs> there it is. I see it. I see it. It's like catching fish. There is my needle. There we go. So I've come out the bottom. And you can see my bottom is not looking beautiful. It's because we're going to cover it with leather. I don't care. Now, this is the hard part. And this is something that Jody excels at. Oh, my gosh. She's so good at this. I have to poke up through the bottom and get my needle to come right where this bar is, right there. So I want to use my x-ray vision to come up through the bottom. Oh, wow. I did actually pretty good. Come up through the bottom of that and sew over the top of that bar. See the bar between each of the cup chains, each of the cups? And that couches it down, holds it in place. I've got quite a lot of thread here. I'm going to shorten that up a little bit so I don't make tangles. There we go. Let's see. Now, where am I now? So I've just tied that one down. Let's tie this one down. I want to be right next to my cabochon. I want to be in the right place so that I can go over this bar. And oh my gosh. I do hope you watch that other video by Jody. She's just fabulous. Da da da. A couple more. There we go. So I've couched all of this down. But when I did that, I'm going through my creative process as I was making this piece of jewelry. I didn't particularly like all these naked spaces here. So I decided I want to do something a little more fun. Excuse me a moment while I get some more seed beads out. There they are and decided to use some more seed beads, because after all, it is the secrets to seed beads. I'm going to use some of these size 15 blue seed beads. You can see the difference here in the size. That's a 15. That's an 11. OK, it doesn't seem like much, but it really makes a difference. OK, so now I'm going to couch back over the top of these with these little seed bead these little seed bead, uh, little tiny size 15s. So I'm bringing my needle up again. I'm adding four of the little blue seed beads. Two, three, four. I'm going back down over that bar again. And the little seed beads are going to hide the bar. And this is what Jody calls her caterpillar stitch. And I'll go over every one of those bars. This is not a quick process. This is a, an heirloom type of piece of jewelry. Because by the time you put all this work into it, you don't want to get a lot of money for it. <laughs> or you want to uh, gift this to family and friends. And uh, some people are faster at it than I am. <laughs> if you've done a lot of this, if you really want to master this technique, You'll practice a lot more, and you'll get very fast at it, like Jody is. She's awesome. There we go. And we make this little caterpillar technique all the way around over the top of our cup chain. Ta-da. 
Ta-da. And that's a really fun technique. And you can see here it is in the finished product where I've done that caterpillar technique all the way around this circle here. Where's my pointy stick? This circle here. Ah, here we are. Now I'm going to take it back a little bit so you can remember what we did here. We're going on to our next step, but I want to remind you that this is how we did this back stitch. Remember this back stitch circle all the way around there? So we did the back stitch circle, and then we, we peyoted the whole bezel on, including the one and a half rows. And now we've got here a sample that has the, the cabochon fully encased in a bezel made of peyote stitch. We did the caterpillar around the outside edge here. And then, while you were getting a sandwich or something, I added three more rows of the backstitch seed beads. This is where you can get really creative because I went in circles. You could go in curly cues and waves and whatever you want to fill in as much territory as you want with these backstitch seed beads in any order you want. And uh, you could also couch it if you'd prefer. I did the backstitch embroidery to get these three circles on. Next step for this focal is to trim that lacy stiff stuff that we had on the edge. I want you to trim it to within, oh, uh, maybe four millimeters of the edge, being always careful not to, to cut your thread. <laughs> and then when you got that trimmed, why don't you find yourself a nice piece of scrap leather, choose which side you want to be pr the pretty side, and glue that onto the back of your stiff stuff. Um, I used E6000 on this again, and again, this is just tacked in place to hold it while you're working. You don't want to go all the way to the edge. You just want enough to tack it in place. You don't need to get excited about gluing this leather on there. It's just a temporary hold while you do all the stitching. Okay, I'm going to finish trimming this to show you how I did it. Let me get my needle out of the way. Like I said, I don't want to cut my, my thread. This is the needle that I was working on with the, um, the back stitch. It's the same thread, the same needle. And I'm going to get my good scissors. I like these. And this time I'm going to trim within like one millimeter of that green row of beads. And I might even look at the back every once in a while. <laughs> so I want to be about one millimeter. Be careful. You got one chance at this. You don't want to get too close. Watch out for that thread there. See, I'm coming up on my thread. Okay. So I'm pull my thread inside so I don't cut it. I like to cut the uh, leather and the stiff stuff at the same time. And don't worry if you did cut your thread, no big deal. You just have to add another thread. I'm good. There we go. Make sure I did not cut that thread. I did not. Yay me, it's still there. <laughs> and now what we're going to do, and uh, this is what I think makes it look so professional, is a brick stitch on the edge. That's another one of the techniques we talked about in the Secrets of Seed Beat in an earlier project. So be aware of that one too. Now I personally like to come out through this, come back in through this leather. So I'm going to go out through the leather. And notice where my long thumbnail comes in handy because it's kind of hard to sew through leather. So I'm pushing it with my thumbnail. <laughs> Pull it through. Okay. So I'm going to come up again through my leather and the stiff stuff. I have to come through both of them, and I am going to get my handy dandy thimble out to help me push that through the leather and through the stiff stuff, and just on the edge of my green seed beads. There we go. Beautiful. Here I'm going to add two blue size 11s two of them. Uh, 
I'm going to go through. Imagine that these are side by side, not end to end, but side by side. Sometimes it's hard to picture. I'll try and make it so you can see it. Mm -hmm. There we go. So these two blue, blue seed beads are going to be side by side. That's the way I want them. So I'm going to go through the leather again from the back to the front through the stiff stuff just next to the green. Fingernails are good. And I'm going to go up through that blue seed bead, opposite direction you'd think, so that it will lay on end on the edge here. On end and next to that one, and I didn't do it. There we go. Go through it that way, so that it will lay on end. There we go. So they lay on end side by side next to here. We're going to go all the way around this so that that little border row will cover up this cut edge of the stiff stuff and the leather. And it looks so cool. But from now on, we're going to add one bead at a time. One bead. I'm going to go through the leather. And the reason, you could go from the stiff stuff out to the leather too if you like. I find it's a little bit easier this way because of going through the leather first. Because the leather is the tough part. The leather is the tough part. Make sure you catch the leather and the stiff stuff. Go back up through this bead you just added and pull it down. And they start lying down side by side by side. It's a beautiful look. It's called, um, I believe it's called circular brick stitch. the leather on the back. Make sure you catch the stiff stuff too. Go up through the bead you just added. Stitch it down in place. All the way around. And we'll get around to the other side too. We'll get to add that one. And this one will get more firmly into place. Right now it's a little bit wonky because that was the first one that was added, but we'll fix it when we come around to the other side. Now on this particular necklace, remember, we're going to have three of those focals that have to be next to each other, all have to be together. So when we get about a third of the way around, I'm going to add this little diamond, this little triangle here. We'll have to pretend a little bit, because I don't think you want to watch me go all the way around. I don't have one. No, don't have one. It's already all the way around. Wait, I grabbed the wrong needle. <laughs> I'm not going to have any luck with that. <laughs> Go through the stiff stuff and the leather. Let's get one more bead on there. And honestly, when you're not in a video studio with a camera on you, this will go a lot faster. <laughs> so now let's imagine that we've gone all the way around and we're coming, at, or we've gone a third of the way around and we want to add that little triangle, that little triangle that's going to be the connector between all of these, these cabochon units you're making. So we're going to make that little triangle right now to show you how. So here we have a base of six beads. I'm going to go up to make this triangle and I'm going to add two beads. And this is basic brick stitch that we did in mm, episode two, I think. Um, and I'm going to go, there's a, a thread between each of these beads. I call that the bridge thread. I'm going to go between these two, these two beads which will get me underneath that bridge thread. So let's say these are beads five and six, and I'm going to go between four and five and put these two 
side by side right on here. And to make sure it continues to go side by side, I go up through the bottom of this bead right here. Pull it nice and tight, and you can see how it lays on its end. Now this one, it doesn't particularly want to. It wants to go kind of wonky and crooked. So I'm going to go down through it again, too, just to tie the two beads together and back up through this one. And that's only on the turn that I have to do that. There we go. And see how those two are going to lie side by side? It's called brick stitch because it looks just like a brick wall as you build it. So where I had six beads on this bottom row, I'm going to have five beads on this row. Now, now that I've got it started, this row started, I'm going to add one bead. I'm going to go under the next bridge. And up through the bead that I just added. If I can make it hold still so I can show you what I mean by up through the bead. There we go. And pull that tight. Add another bead, go under the next bridge, go up through this bead. Pull that tight, and they just lay next to each other. At least they're supposed to, if I didn't make a twist in it somewhere. Let's see if I can fix it right away. what I did. Here we go. Up through that bead. Oh, come on. Okay, when in doubt, take it out. Notice sometimes when I take the beads out, I will actually unstring my needle. When you try and backtrack through all your threads. This is actually another secret to seed beads. When you try and backtrack through, you're more likely to make a tangle or a knot or sometimes, and sometimes you just save time by unthreading your needle and re-threading it. So I add a bead, go under that bridge, go up through this bead. There, now it's laying straight. And this will finish this row here. And we'll go up another row. So you can see we've got two rows of brick stitch. Again, because I'm at the end of a row, I'll pick up two beads. I will go through under this bridge right here. Go back up through that second bead added. So they'll both lay next to each other. But this one wants to go wonky. So I will sew it back on and sew it to its buddy so that it has to stand up straight. Ta-da. Add another bead. Go under the bridge. Go up through this bead. Add another bead, go under the bridge, just the bridge, which is one piece of black thread which you can't hardly see, and up through the same bead. And we go on to the next row. We add two beads, go through under this bridge, up, under, tie these two together so that they'll lay straight. Pull everything tight. Oh, come on. Next bead. 
under this bridge, up through here, add two beads. Go under this bridge, go up through that second bead, tie the two beads together so that they'll stand up straight. And there is your little triangle. And that's going to be the connection to the next roundy round. So you're going to basically do these cabochons three times, put the triangles in the appropriate places, and when we're all done, we're going to sew those all together. The next step in this great project is to put this little pico edge on here. And we've done it earlier in this series, in this 10-part series, we've done these little edges, pico edges, or it's the same thing as a fringe. It's just a very, very, very short fringe. Uh, here we go. We'll take our, our piece we were working on. Actually, now I've got all the brick stitch done all the way around the outside edge. I've done this little triangle area, which is for joining to the next cabochon. And now I want to do that pico edge. So I just finished making this triangle, and I'm coming out of this bead here. I'm going to work my way back. I'm going to be, what's the word I'll use? Skittling. Back into my design. I want to come out over here, because that's where I'm going to add my first little pico edge. And remember, as you skittle, just go through a bead at a time and make sure that you're picking the path that allows that extra beading thread to go down into the gullies of your piece so that they aren't visible. You notice all the stringing and, and stretching and things I've done here, do you see much thread? There's a little thread up here, but pretty much I've done a really good job at hiding the thread. And hiding the thread is kind of a key to a real professional looking piece of seed beadwork. Even on the back, where we put on that that edging. Look at how tight those little stitches look. Very, very tight, very little thread that you can see. That's a professional look. Uh, okay, I've skittled my way down here. And I'm going to come out this bead right here. And now we'll add our first pico edge. And I'm going to do that with just one of those hyacinth bicones and a size 15 green seed bead. Bring those down. And like some of the picos and all of the fringes we've done, I'm going to skip the green seed bead. I'm going to go back through the orange. And normally I would go back into the same hole that I came out of, the same seed bead I came out of. But in this case, I want my picos to rest between seed beads. So I'm actually going to go into the next hole so that my, my little orange bicone is resting between these two seed beads. Looks good. Go up through the next seed bead available. Add a bicone and a green seed bead. Skip the green seed bead and go into the next bead available. That one right there. Fun, huh? This is just easy breezy little finishing touches that are going to make your piece fabulous. Incidentally, these little green seed beads, these are size 15s again. Sorry, I keep bringing back those itty bitty beads, but they make the little, you know, just make a difference when you use those little guys sometimes. So, and we would go all the way till we're about a third of the way through where we want to make our next diamond. I mean, our next triangle for attachment. Just keep going 
and we can make our next attachment spot. So once we've made all three of these, that's when we sew them together here at this joint where those two seed beads were, at this joint where these two seed beads were, and up here at the top where our rope edge is going to join in with our, our, our cabochon. And there you have it, episode 10 of The Secrets to Seed Bead. Wow, what a journey it's been. We started off with uh, a simple quilling stitch, which started with ladder stitch, and, and we did a brick stitch, and we've done peyote, and uneven peyote, and 3D peyote, and circular peyote. Oh my gosh, not to mention the herringbone. We did the chenille stitch, and of course this twisted rope stitch, and lots and lots of other things. Pico edges, secrets, tips, lovely things like that. <sighs> so much information in this 10-part series. I hope you've liked and shared and commented, and please share any designs you've made from all these things you've learned. Thanks so much for joining me. I have really enjoyed helping you out and helping you learn this. Like, share, comment, and happy beating. Mm -hmm.